we had COVID where we were down for several weeks. Then we had the semiconductor shortage where we couldn't make vehicles for a while. So we still have pent up demand and we're seeing very strong demand for our vehicles. GM is in big trouble with rumours about a potential bankruptcy circulating. GM took a massive gamble on electric cars, and it's turning out to be a colossal mistake, with the chance for a turnaround slowly slipping away. The esteemed automaker is teetering on the brink of bankruptcy, with CEO Mary Barra taking the heat. But what really went wrong? The very fate of this iconic American automaker hangs in the balance, and we're about to spill the beans on the whole situation. So let's dive into the details and understand why it's such a big deal. General Motors recently found itself in a tight spot, and the CEO, Mary Barra, is at the centre of the catastrophe. Following the CEO's lead, GM went all in on electric cars, leaving their old gas guzzlers behind. Now, the largest car maker in the US is selling electric vehicles at a loss. They produced these sleek electric cars that few are buying, while their reliable gasoline-powered counterparts were slowly being left behind. Mary Barra's rationale behind this puzzling decision had everyone scratching their heads, but the situation slowly got out of hand. We're talking about problems like subpar production quality, factories shutting down due to low demand for their electric cars, and a massive $3 billion employee strike. Now they're pulling the plug on their best seller, the Bolt EV. The situation is dire and GM's electrifying journey is hitting some rough patches. As per Bloomberg's report, GM's electric vehicle division is in deep financial trouble, with their gas-powered cars covering the hefty losses. Which begs the question, why is GM pushing electric cars so vigorously? GM found itself in a sticky situation after Mary Barra openly admitted they're not turning a profit on electric cars at the moment, let alone being able to lower the prices of their luxury EVs. Instead of targeting a price range between $30,000 and $50,000, they're churning out these high-priced EVs costing more than $60,000. That's not exactly wallet-friendly for the average consumer. Despite setting an ambitious goal of selling over 1 million electric cars by 2025, this year they only managed to sell around 44,000 units and they're selling them at a loss. GM is making efforts to cut costs though. They've developed new Altium batteries expected to be around 40% cheaper than the ones currently used in their Chevy Bolt. While this is promising, there's no clear timeline for when these batteries will hit the market. Mary Barra is hopeful that battery costs will drop to about $87 per kilowatt hour by 2025. However, she acknowledges that electric cars might not become as affordable as their gas-powered counterparts until later in the decade. This predicament places GM in a tight spot, primarily because most global car sales fall within the $30,000 to $40,000 price range. They've been bleeding money in their electric vehicle program, promising that it will be a gold mine by 2025. But for now, they're selling electric cars at a loss, and quality control has taken a back seat while they rush to assert their dominance in the electric car market. They've faced numerous recalls, one of which was for brake fluid leaks that could potentially lead to fires in more than 40,000 Chevrolet Silverado trucks. This isn't just a public relations nightmare, it could also incur significant repair expenses. Remember the financial crisis of 2008 when GM faced a colossal loss of $31 billion, equivalent to $85 million down the drain daily. Though they managed to recover since then, the current challenges could plunge them back into financial turmoil. And it gets worse because Tesla and Ford have joined forces, granting Ford access to Tesla's supercharging network. This alliance might give both companies a significant advantage in the EV industry and potentially leave GM trailing behind. Other automakers are also charging ahead in the electric vehicle race, making it increasingly challenging for GM to maintain any first mover advantage. GM initially had ambitious plans for their Altium platform and a lineup of assembly plants for electric cars, including their factory in Detroit. However, their factory faced a month-long closure last year, and GM only managed to deliver 86 Cadillac Lyric and 72 Hummer EVs in the last quarter, despite having a staggering 880,000 orders for these vehicles. 
Adding to GM's woes, the United Auto Workers, UAW, a powerful union representing nearly 150,000 workers, has declared war on GM. They initiated strikes at three Midwest plants, demanding a 40% pay rise, a shorter work week, and the elimination of a multi-tiered wage system. But why the 40% demand? As it turns out, the CEOs of GM, Ford and Stellantis have witnessed their own pay soar by that much in just four years. In 2022, GM's CEO Mary Barra pocketed a whopping $29 million, marking a 34% increase since 2019. Mary Barra's salary has seen a significant 34% increase over the last four years, with her total compensation nearing the $30 million mark. She justifies this by explaining that 92% of her compensation is tied to the company's stock performance, a clever tactic that not only inflates her earnings, but also enjoys a lower tax rate than a standard salary. Additionally, the company has engaged in stock buybacks, artificially inflating stock prices, which directly benefits executive performance-based pay, but does little for the average worker. The average worker on the GM assembly line grapples with the daily struggle to make ends meet. An analysis by the Anderson Economic Group predicts that if all auto workers were to strike, it could cost the company a staggering $5 billion in just 10 days. But why can't they share the profits? Seth Harris, a senior fellow at the Burns Centre for Social Change, puts it bluntly. There's no doubt that the automakers can afford to share their profits fairly with their workers. But here's the twist. Ford CEO Jim Farley suggests that meeting the UAW's terms could potentially push the company into bankruptcy. This statement was quite startling, especially after GM posted $10 billion in net profits. The UAW strike against Detroit's car companies may also work in favour of Japanese automakers, allowing them to gain a larger share of the US market. According to economists, the strike, combined with high interest rates, is making new domestic vehicles less affordable for many consumers. Among the Detroit 3 automakers, General Motors is the most vulnerable to potential sales damage this year due to the ongoing strike. Economists, including Cox Automotive's chief economist Jonathan Smoke, suggest that Japanese brands, particularly Toyota, are in a strong position to benefit from the strike's repercussions. Toyota has resolved its supply issues and is increasing vehicle production. Additionally, Asian automakers tend to offer lower priced sedans and smaller SUVs compared to the Detroit 3's higher priced large pickups and SUVs, making their vehicles not only more available but also more affordable for consumers. The stand-up strike strategy chosen by the UAW has initially caused minimal disruption, and that's one reason why we haven't witnessed significant impacts so far. However, the scope of the strike is expanding. The approach the union is adopting could result in a longer-lasting disruption. The UAW president, Sean Fain, declared the strike when labour negotiations failed on September 14, the exact time the union's existing contract expired. In what they've labelled a stand-up strike, Fain initially announced targeted plans for the strike, including Ford Michigan Assembly Plant in Wayne, Stellantis Toledo Assembly Complex in Ohio, and GM's Wentzville Assembly in Missouri. Later, Fain expanded the strike to include 38 parts distribution sites across the nation owned by GM and Stellantis, citing a lack of progress in negotiations by these two companies. So far, parts suppliers have borne the brunt of the collateral damage, with some being forced to lay off hundreds of workers due to lack of work at the closed facilities affected by the strike. Many suppliers are concerned about the viability of their businesses if the strike continues. All three automakers have also had to lay off thousands of workers associated with the affected facilities. When the strike began, the US auto industry had 800,000 more new vehicles in inventory than it did at the same time the previous year. The Detroit 3 collectively represent 40% of all US new vehicle sales, but their sales primarily consist of pickups, SUVs and higher priced vehicles compared to import brands. So GM is the most vulnerable among the Detroit 3 because they've been having a relatively successful year, particularly in selling compact SUVs. GM cannot afford any hiccups at this point and the strike is an unwanted disruption for the company. 
GM has a significant number of crucial electric vehicle launches planned by the end of the year, which are pivotal to its long-term transition towards selling exclusively electric vehicles. Experts agreed that if the strike persists beyond Thanksgiving, the industry is likely to encounter setbacks reminiscent of 2021, when a severe shortage of new vehicles occurred due to a shortage of chip parts. This shortage of new car inventory impeded sales and drove up prices for new and used models. We are likely to start seeing the initial signs of impact before the end of October, particularly affecting vehicles with tight supply. And if the strike continues, if GM believes they have problems now, wait until their workforce turns against them. This will not be a mere problem. It's a disaster in the making, one that could potentially bring down the entire company. So there you have it. GM finds itself in quite a predicament, struggling with financial losses on electric cars, quality control issues and labour disputes. While they hold hope for better days with cheaper batteries and increased electric car sales, it's evident that they face significant hurdles, including fierce competition and internal conflicts. So do you think GM will survive this? Comment below and please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. That's all from this video. See you at the next one.